Good day, my friends. My name is Donald Welch, and I'm a generosity minister in the Pacific Northwest. I'm coming to you today from my office for a couple of reasons. One, I want to present an authentic version of myself, and this is where I spend a lot of my time. And two, I am no video producer or artist of any kind. Every time I try to make things look good, it actually turns into a total disaster. But what I can do, however, is tell a good story. And I have got a great one for you today. I live in Oregon in particular, but I often have the opportunity to travel to various congregations and share with them in worship. And not so long ago, I had an opportunity to travel to a small congregation in western Washington called Nealton to have one of those traveling worship experiences. While I was there, I had an experience that demonstrated God's profound grace. And it inspired me so much that I've been grateful for it ever since, and I've been telling as many people about it as I possibly can. Here's what happened. As we gathered for worship, we did what a number of small churches do before they start praying and singing. We shared our prayer concerns with each other. And even though I was a visitor, I offered one up. I let the group know that my wife's cousin was struggling with alcoholism and that it was likely the first time that he'd be spending the holiday alone because he was starting to alienate those who loved him the most. I kept things confidential because I didn't have permission to share names. But after church was over, we were eating together, and the pastor of that church came to me privately and asked if I could give him the name that I had offered up. He wanted to make it a matter of daily prayer because he himself <clears throat> was a recovering alcoholic, and he could relate to my kin's struggle. Right there in that moment, I completely lost the name of my wife's cousin. It had slipped out of my brain like a piece of cheese off a cracker. I was dumbstruck. So what I did uh, was panic, and like any panicked creature, um, I made up a name. I couldn't remember his name, so I remembered his brother's name, and his brother's name was Chris. So I said his name was Chris. And I guess in the midst of my struggle, I thought that uh, the prayer would go up for Chris and God would get it to land on the right person because Chris was so close to him, with his brother. God would sort it out and the intention of the prayer would still be intact. So the pastor and I continued to talk for just a few more minutes about his own struggle. And uh, then we were about to shift our attention to others who were there at church, and he said to me, quote, I just want you to know, you can tell your wife that I'll be praying for Jeff every day. He got the name right. My struggling cousin was indeed named Jeff. And I had to stop the pastor in that moment to let him know that he was hearing the voice of God. Meanwhile, I couldn't wait to tell Jeff. And I did tell Jeff eventually when we were able to finally reach him about a month later. My wife and I wanted to let him know that God remembered him. God didn't make any promises to Jeff in that moment. He didn't tell Jeff that he was going to heal him. Jeff is still going to have the chance to do right with his own life or to perish. But God did say, I will not forget you. My friends, how beautiful is God's grace? And how can you not feel gratitude for it? Doesn't it want to drive you to be generous? Doesn't it want to help you make the world better as an agent of God? 
If you have been inspired by God's grace and generosity today, I invite you to give back by giving of your own resources to the community of Christ. Please give to both your local church and to World Mission Tithes in order to drive the peace of Jesus Christ. And remember, God knows you. God loves you.